So I was playing on the floor the other day with my daughter and I found myself building terrain pieces with her magnet tiles. Uh, it started with simple ruins, the usual L-shaped corners of buildings. There were a few box-shaped bunkers that I could build. I even made angled bunkers using triangle-shaped pieces. And uh, I thought, like, these, these actually look pretty good. And they're toys. They, they're designed to hold up to light play from a three-year-old. So they'll, I think they'll probably hold up to the gentle movement of, you know, tiny lightweight models going across them. And so that 40K terrain that I was building turned into kill team terrain. And then I squished it even more and turned it into mazes and corridors. And that's when the light bulb went off. With the new boarding actions of the Arcs of Omen rule set coming, uh, the, the rules that are designed for fighting on space hulks and you know, close quarters, I wanted to see how well I could pull off using these magnet tile toys painted up as modular terrain. So I've seen a lot of people trying to make their kill team I believe it's Shadow Vaults and Into the Dark, the, the, the Space Hulk terrain. They've been trying to make it modular by adding magnets to the walls, drilling holes, and you know, putting magnets in it. That's 40K. I play Tau. We magnetize everything. Uh, so that's part of the hobby. But magnetiles already have the magnets built in. So that's pretty cool. And because they're designed in a factory, they always line up. The magnets always line up. So you can find magnet tiles pretty cheap online. Uh, if you search Facebook Marketplace, I guarantee there is some mom whose toddler doesn't care about them anymore and she's got a bucket full of them for 20 bucks. Uh, the particular brand that I'm working with today is called Picasso Tiles. Uh, we have two brands in my daughter's collection, uh, but of the two, the Picasso tiles have stronger magnets, uh, and they've got this really great recessed square in the center of each tile, which I'm planning to use for the floor grates to recess the, the floor grate texture. So with the approval of my wife, I snagged a handful of tiles from my daughter's collection. Uh, she's got a ton of them. She's not gonna notice a few of the squares missing. I got to work cutting up this grid-shaped underlayment. This is uh, a material, it's rubbery, it's used to help keep rugs in place. And uh, this looked really good for floor grates. I had it laying around, so that's why I used it. Uh, but if I were buying material for this project, uh, you may have seen other people do this in terrain builds. They use drywall tape from the hardware store. Uh, I'm pretty sure they call drywall plasterboard outside of the US, so it's a tape that's used to join two pieces of drywall together. Um, there's a couple of different types, but one of the types, if you've got a hardware store that's got a few different options, uh, there's a nicer tape. It's In the US, it's like 10 or $12, and it's got this great grid texture to it. And so you could just stick that on. You don't even have to use glue. I went with standard PVA glue for this material because uh, I'm using this like silic, I don't even know what the material is, it's rubbery, and I'm adhering it to plastic, so PVA was the way to go for me. Uh, but once again, if you use the drywall tape, the adhesive is already there for you, which is way more convenient, but for me, that I had what I had. So with the floors done, I needed to make the walls look interesting, so I needed some bits, some different hoses and shapes and gears and whatever. I needed texture to glue onto the walls. So naturally I dug through more of my kids' toys and I found these ridiculous bubble wands. Uh, no, no one needs this many bubble wands. So I used super glue on these bits. Uh, probably could have done plastic glue as well. Uh, if I were doing a full board of this stuff, I would have definitely spent more time finding bits. Uh, but this is just a proof of concept. I genuinely would love to see someone with more expendable hobby funds uh, to take this concept a bit further. So definitely let me know if you give this a try. I waited for the glue to dry overnight just because I didn't want to paint over wet glue. And the next day I primed it black. 
I had dreams of really painting these walls up for the video and using all kinds of colors, but honestly, I did a simple, heavy dry brushing of a metallic color over the whole terrain piece, and it just, it just popped. It looked very convincing, and uh, when I put all of the tiles together, it just worked. Again, this is a proof of concept, and I think it proved the concept. I'm really satisfied with how this went. Uh, I really honestly regret not making a whole table's worth because this just looks like so much fun to play a game on. Um, I love how it looks with the minimal effort, and it's incredibly modular. The tiles are three inches by three inches, uh, so one, that makes measuring distances really easy for 40K since a lot of stuff moves six inches. But also, two, if three inches is too narrow for you, because I don't know the rules for this boarding actions game yet, if it's too narrow, you can make it a six inch corridor or a nine inch room. I had a lot of fun with this project. It yielded pretty instantly gratifying results. And if you do try this for yourself, please, please, please tag me or message me. However you do that on YouTube, I'm not on here a ton, uh, but I would love to see how far you can take this concept. Cause I think in the right hands, this could be really, really cool. I'd love to see your work. Thanks for watching.